in case we run out of seats, I want you to know that these seats are not hot. You can sit up here if you like. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start our mayor and city council meeting. And it's all kind of informal like we want to do. We should be mad, I guess. And the first one, city manager, I believe, is going to be received in downtown revitalization. Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor, that, that is true. Uh, Jill Hall is here, as well as uh, Dr. Shana uh, uh, and, and others from the Partnership Committee. But Jill will be presenting today. Uh, we also have John Kreisel here with the Chamber of DEC. If there's any questions as we get towards the end, then we have some staff support as well from PD and also code enforcement. Just before we start, the goal of the view to serve on this committee is the uh, process committee. Would you just hold your hand so everyone knows who you are? These are the individuals who serve on the downtown government. What do you call it? Okay, Mr. Hill. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Morrison, and council members. It's my pleasure to bring you an update today on the downtown revitalization project. And we're going to take a look back at where we've been in the past five years and share the good news of what's happened since. Today we're going to cover, just touch on why it's important to revitalize downtown, why I care about downtown. Uh, we're, gonna, we're also going to cover the accomplishments in the past five years and look at the path moving forward and then also have time for public input from you and then the public as well. And that we'll keep right with that and make sure to include that in plans in the future. Jill, before we go in, are you able to hear that in the back? No. Well, why don't we do this, if it's okay? Why don't you, why don't you come here and you can okay. and speak in that direction, too. Many of you are probably very familiar with this, but some, some aren't. Um, the message is 
the message needs to get out there still. Um, this historic overlay district was adopted in 2009, and it roughly runs from 4th Street to 8th Street, and Santa Fe Avenue to Avenue B. And this is formed on the basis of our historic resources survey, and 50% of these properties in this district contribute to the historic character of the district. In 2009, historic district design guidelines were established, and this was to provide guidelines for staff and for property owners to make appropriate alterations to their buildings in the historic district. Um, in 2010, the city received designation as a certified local government, and this was uh, based on our robust preservation program that began just two years prior. And this is a federal, state, and local partnership for preservation, and they offer grant opportunities. And as you can see, the following year, the city applied for and received two grants. One was to develop a historic, historical outreach video for 12,500, and the other was to prepare a district nomination to the National Register of Historic Places. Uh, this comes with really recognition, nationwide recognition, uh, to have a, a National Register district but also is basic eligibility for 20% tax credits for um, their federal rehabilitative tax credits. And this is just another way that if our nomination is approved, we would actually have the first mid-century district in the state of Texas, which is really, really a neat thing and very unique for us. In 2011, just this past November, the city also submitted two more CLG grants to conduct citywide historic resources surveys and to prepare individual nominations to the National Register of Historic Places. Our facade improvement group program was established back in 2009, and it is um, condensed to the historic overlay district area, and that was to focus those visual improvements to create a high impact. It is a four to one matching grant, and the maximum grant here is 10,000 for one principal facade and 20,000 for a dual principal facade. And as you can see, I have a few slides here that just kind of show you um, through CDBG dollars and city dollars what has been accomplished thus far with all these projects. This is 220, 224 East Avenue D. Before and after, this is one of our high priority buildings. Uh, the grade amount was the maximum there, and they also made their match. And they also removed some of the shutters that weren't really historic to the building and just repaired and um, repainted that historic masonry of that building as well. This is our second project, 217 East Avenue D. Um, this is a low historic priority. And how they come up with that is just that if it's lost, a lot of the historic value already. Um, that's how that was designated is how they judge that. Um, before and after. Um, and the grant amount here was 7200 with private investment of $1,800. Our third project was at 412 North Gray Street, and the construction year here was 1925. It is a low priority, but there was a large private investment with this facade grant, and uh, quite a great improvement with opening up new windows here to make this blank wall kind of go in and get more inviting, add a new split face stone, and reconstructing the parapets. Um, the, private, the private investment required here was only 5000 and the private investment was actually almost 25000 So we're glad to see the private kicking in here. 306 East Avenue D, medium priority building here. Uh, it's a great project as well where the property owner went above and beyond on the match. Roof was repaired, the masonry was repaired and repainted. They have a new sign with external lighting, really unique what we're trying to encourage here in downtown. 307 North 8th Street. This is actually an alley wall, which our facade grant program does allow if it's, um, if it's visible from a thoroughfare, if it's part of the streetscape, then you can definitely see it as part of the streetscape. And this is our latest project. It's almost complete. This is Crystal's Flowers at 216 East Avenue B. And as you can see that the old awning that wasn't historic to the building wall has been removed. And the flat awning that's more consistent with the construction period of the building was brought back and added stone columns and a new sign and, and reconstructed the parapet. A lot of changes to this building. The grand amount here was 20000 with private, private investment of 9700 And as you can see, we have several projects, actually a couple more than this now, that 
have applied for the grant, so you should be able to see these, these improvements very soon in the future to these buildings as well. Next, just touching on the public improvements that we've seen thus far in Flame. Uh, one big project that we have coming up this year is the downtown uh, trail extension and the downtown streetscaping project. The city was awarded the $2.5 million tech stock grant to extend the ADK Wells Trail west along Avenue G and then to provide a downtown pedestrian loop with a number of improvements to the historic district area. So you can see a zoomed in view here. There's going to be a mid-block plaza with uh, space for limited seating and possibly public art in the future. There will be new sidewalks, new landscaping, very util utility lines wherever possible, um, and also pavers, decorative pedestrian crossings, and new lighting as well. Um, this project is actually under review right now by TxDOT, the plans are, and construction should begin uh, this summer for this project downtown. Another, another really great project that's been a great example for us for adaptive reuse is the Clean Arts and Activity Center, with, which is the former First Baptist Church on the north side of downtown. Um, it's, it was designed as a one-stop shop for cultural and social services, and it's turned out to be really a beautiful project with a performing arts center that's set to open in the spring. Melbourne Academy has already moved in, had starts there. And here's just the design phase before any changes were made. And I think that's also a good example of, I've heard the phrase that downtown must be useful to its residents first and before you draw people in. And this is a really good example of that. And this is where we're at today. It's partially open and it's already buzzing, hopping with people um, from about eight to five. It's really, it's really neat to see everything going on on the north side of downtown. Right across the street, is Green Avenue Farmer's Market, um, Park and Farmer's Market. This was designed as a dual purpose project where um, really a park space for the residential areas around it and then a permanent location for the farmers as well. Um, as you can see, here's a landscape plan for that park. It's under construction now and um, it's going to have a pavilion, a closet, restrooms, and uh, many other amenities, landscaping, actually free wireless internet access for people to come out on their lunch breaks or if you want to go out and use your laptops that have a lot of neat features. Clean Area Growers Association will actually be running the day-to-day -day, um, part of the market. As you can see here, we've had a lot of partnerships and collaboration with this project along with a lot of other projects that have really just made a lot of these things happen. Um, and this actually should be open this spring, and we hope to have a, a joint kickoff event with the Clean Arts and Activity Center here in the near future. Two other elements of public improvements are our downtown revitalization patrol unit that's led by Lieutenant Reese Davis that's here tonight. Four officers are actually dedicated to the downtown district to help with policing activities, and it's really made a difference. Um, another element that we have is code enforcement initiatives that have really been focused in our downtown area. And I have a lot of before and after photos here, um, but Officer Alvarez has worked um, in downtown for a number of years, and I'm sure a lot of you have met him, and actually Barbara um, Dockery also is now the new code enforcement officer for downtown, and I know she's looking forward to meeting everyone. And, um, one of the ways that they really try to work with property owners is through voluntary compliance. They don't want to put the stick out first, but work with the property owner. And these may be changes you don't notice if you go to downtown every day, but when you see it by, side by side, it really makes a big difference. This is also the wayfinding signage program. The first sign was unveiled in 2010, and there will be more to come. Um, as the streetscaping is under construction, we actually have five of these already made, ready to put in once the new streetscaping comes in. And lastly on this topic is um, economic development. The tax increment reinvestment zone was established in 2008. 
and it was established for 20 years. The CTC in Bell County and the city participate in this. And if you haven't heard of it before, how it works is at the time it's established, the property value, the assessed property value is frozen essentially. And any increase in that property value, that property tax for that increase, can be used back in that zone. Um, so it can be used for public improvements or economic development, um, streetscaping, land assembly, you know, parking garage. It, it's really neat because you can use it back in that zone from where uh, the property tax was increased. Tax abatement was another program that was established uh, back in 2008. And this is um, basic criterion for this is minimum investment of $50,000 create or retain jobs, historic revitalization impacts. And how this works is in property tax is abated for only increased property values for a certain number of years. And the maximum you can receive here is five years or 100% of taxes abated. One of our more recent programs too is the sign grant program. This is also within the Historic Overlay District, and I have applications here for Historic Overlay District and sign grant applications as well, if you'd like to pick up one. This is a reimbursable grant, 50-50 matching grant um, of up to $800. And as you can see, this is one of the, um, recent, the recent sign grant projects, Solution One Business Center. This is a really nice sign. Um, the property owner went above and beyond on the match for this sign as well. And here, uh, the downtown action agenda provided a number of recommendations, like I mentioned. And what I've done is created a list of all of the recommendations that were that were in the downtown action agenda. And I will just highlight the ones that are checked there. Um, there are ones that aren't checked that are still in progress, but it's an ongoing effort. I just want to highlight some of these for you today. Uh, one, focus resources to the historic core. The saw grants and sign grants in the HOV um, have been established to help with this. Downtown streetscaping is going to happen this year, and concentrated code enforcement efforts have really made a difference. Investor confidence with good news. And the staff has given many presentations stayed on point with City Council, Noon Lions Club, Clean Area Heritage Association, just to name a few, to, to get the word out about what's happening in downtown. Another is improved perception of public safety. That has helped a lot with the new downtown unit that has walking patrols and also the police station is going to have a substation that remains open in downtown to have that policing presence. Here we have um, catalyst projects, public safety initiatives, new patrols added to downtown once again, and code enforcement has piloted graffiti control program and work here is ongoing as well. Special family-oriented events. In 2011, we had Cinco de Mayo. We have Christmas activities, and there's also future future planned events. Once the street saving is completed, like the free clinic benefit concert, clean wine festival in the future. Another is redevelop the First Baptist Church. You saw pictures of that. It's a great re adaptive reuse project. Other catalyst projects: KISD presence in downtown area. The Melbourne Academy located is located in the new Clean Arts and Activities Center, so it's increased that presence in the downtown. Also create the terrorism and tax abatement, which we just recently discussed. Private property improvements, design guidelines for all of downtown. This, like I mentioned earlier, in 2008, historic district design guidelines were established, and streetscaping guidelines for all of downtown are in development right now. The SOD study that was fully implemented with the Historic Resources Survey, and facade grants, um, also the ordinance to improve improve appearance of building and windows. The historic overlay district ordinance uh, has really helped improve the entire the entire appearance of our historic overlay district, and so will eventual rezoning of the downtown will also help with that appearance. Public property improvements, street taking in the historic district. Like I mentioned earlier, we received a text lot grant, and that should begin construction this summer. Also create a wayfinding system, like you just saw the picture of, and clean and improve vacant lot. I believe that's a vacant lot at Avenue D and Gray at this time. There was a, a building that was dangerous at the time, and it's, it has been, since been demolished, and the site has been cleaned up. 
one-on-ones with business owners. Uh, staff is visited with owners to promote grants, but more outreach is needed here. New and relocated farmers market. We have the Green Avenue Park and Farmers Market currently under construction. Um, economic development incentives. We have the tax increment reinvestment zone and tax abatement programs for downtown. And expand hop service. Uh, there is a new stop in the downtown and it's still expanding now. Positive stories about downtown and the media. Staff contact media to report positive de developments in downtown, including grants awarded, facade improvements, or, or special events. And also developing a special event, like we touched on earlier, all the events that have happened and that are planned to happen. And here's another way of just showing the information that we've discussed through kind of a timeline format so you can see how these projects have occurred over time. I'll just through these, you can see where we've come in the past five years. And then um, the downtown action agenda has really led our initiatives over the past five years. And um, more recently, the downtown plan was adopted as a component of the um, comprehensive plan. And I have a copy here if you'd like to look at it afterwards. But one way you can differentiate the action agenda and the downtown plan is the action agenda seems more of um, what, to, what you should do to revitalize downtown. And the downtown plan is more written as a how-to strategy of how to make it happen. And some of the recommendations they have, for instance, are a virtual incubator, revolving loan fund, um, detailed property databases, ditch naturalization, gateway enhancement, so a variety of, of different things to um, tackle in the coming years. And so far you've seen a snapshot of where we've been the past five years. And as you can see, the revitalization process isn't over and it's a long-term project. If you look at the communities around us that look great right now, like Waco has been working there on their downtown for, since the 60s. And <coughs> Fort Worth has said they're a 30-year overnight success story. So it does, it does take a while. But um, even when you reach the point where downtown is, has vitality during the day and weekends, it still needs to be measured and improved. Um, but we're still, um, the foundation has been laid, and um, especially through our historic preservation program, economic development incentives, public improvements, private investments have occurred downtown, and the downtown plan will definitely be our guide moving forward. And then next we have um, time set aside for comments, questions, and uh, before we begin, I just wanted to point out that we do have a sign-in sheet with the check check box if you want to receive any emails about announcements for downtown meetings or downtown happenings. We also have a public comment form if you don't if you'd rather not go to the podium and ask a question or give a comment, we'd be happy to respond and record what you have to say there soon. Um, but if you're looking for information on downtown in the future, please feel free to contact me. I have a business card there, and we are also going to update the website in the very near future and also get a presentation on the city's um, government channel as well. So I'd be happy to answer any questions that you all have now. Are there any questions? Yes, sir. You want to put that for you? First of all, I want to congratulate you on the work you've done. I've been working downtown for over 30 years, and uh, I've never seen it look better. It's not, but I'll make sure and uh, send it to our, our web our web director tomorrow. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. yeah. One question. Back up for me. First, I would like to thank Jill. She worked on a project with me last year. Uh, I'm Dr. Dan Tant. Uh, been involved in politics in the city and arts for probably 25 years here. So. My question really at this point is about the arts part of it. The clean arts, what is it? Arts? arts what are you design. calling it? Okay. When will it be open is question one. Uh, what do we know about it? And uh, I guess the other question is why do some people, uh, are they using it now? And other people have not found out what is going on. We did request.
request about a year ago, I think when I was talking to you, the, the city manager, uh, information on the cost of using it, the, the budgets uh, related to how much it costs to use a, an area for whatever, dance, music, whatever. So anyway, if you could tell us more about the Arts Center and how it's operating and when it will be, I appreciate it. Thank you. Dr. Cobb, what we have in, in the audience, uh, currently the half of the building is open, meaning the uh, Millbrook uh, Academy, the free clinic, the public side, the two auditoriums are not uh, ready to go. Thank you. They're not ready to go at present time. We're looking at probably a, a mid-late spring opening. We're about uh, two months away. We've not begun taking reservations yet for any of the spaces. We do have the art guild that's there. Uh, there will be in their area a... Uh, oh gosh, I, I lost the name a little bit. The quilt crawl. And that, that'll be there on a Saturday. A quilt crawl. It's a, a special event. that's taking place all over Bell County. Uh, but, but as far as public use and, and the auditoriums, those are not available yet. We will get the, uh, um, that information out uh, to the public. We'll have another briefing on that very facility and the dynamics and how that will work. Thank you. Yes, sir. Any other questions? Good evening, everybody. So I'm the owner of the uh, 220 Avenue D, so I took advantage of the uh, revitalizing process, so I appreciate that, Bill. Um, I see all the structures. I see all the improvements on existing structures and the, the future plans of the outdoor features and making it more, I guess, more obvious for people to come down to, to, to downtown. But my question is, have, we, have you guys looked at plans in regards to inviting businesses or maybe attract other franchise businesses to come downtown so that you can create a general public, create more footsteps downtown so that we can actually get more people here even on the weekends. You pointed out that on the weekends we're, we're still